This is the Highland Training Center at Highland Mountain Bike Park in New Hampshire. The HTC is one of the many cool and unique things you'll find here. I'll tell you all about the HTC later, but first I'm going to review the bike park in its entirety. Oh yeah! I rode Highland Mountain Bike Park for one full day during my New England trip, and this wasn't nearly enough time to ride everything there. Highland's ski area, as it was called in the 60s and 70s, changed hands quite a few times. In the 90s, it just sat there in disrepair, until in 2003, someone decided to build a bike park there. With the original lift restored, Highland opened as a bikes-only park. As far as I can tell, that makes it the only lift-serve facility of its kind. Highland is not a ski resort, and everything is set up just for mountain bikers. Do you like foam pits and resi jumps? Of course you do. How about buffalo chicken wraps or fresh smoothies? How about beer? How about airbags and bananas? It's like they read our collective minds. Everything at Highland is for us, and for that reason, I love it. But today, I'm going to rate it just like any other park. So let's jump straight into that. Like I implied, this rating system is imperfect. I only spent one day at Highland and didn't get a chance to ride everything. Experiences at bike parks also vary wildly based on the weather and how recently the trails were groomed. So always take these reviews with a grain of salt. I'll rate the park in 10 categories from 0 to 10, and then add them up. The first category is lift ticket price, which is 44 for an adult and 21 for riders 12 and under. To use the jump park and training center, it's $20 per session. I think this is mostly average, but not everyone offers special rates for juniors. Still, if you want to ride the jump park and training facility too, you're in for about $64. For what you're getting, that's fair, so I'll give it a 5 on value. To anyone in the Concord metro area, Highland is going to be pretty convenient to get to. You won't be encountering any traffic. The same goes for anyone in Massachusetts, Vermont, or even Maine. You'll probably need to drive on some dirt roads and likely spend a few hours in the car, but it's nothing like driving through New York City or Connecticut. I give Highland a 6 on ease of access, since it's a relatively uneventful and pleasant drive from most places in the Northeast. Next, I'll rate the rentals. Although I didn't rent a bike at Highland, I did check out their shop. Alright, you gotta get a headset spacer. Do you guys have uh, headset spacers I could buy? It looked like a real bike repair shop, not like a rental repair shop, if that makes sense. This was a good sign. I also heard nothing but good things about the rental fleet, even rave reviews from people riding there. Just like everything else at Highland, it's designed to please mountain bikers, with all the variety and quality you could want. Pricing is fair and based on equipment. I give Highland an 8 on rentals for being an exceptional place to rent a quality bike, right next to a lift. Let's talk about that lift. As I mentioned, Highland was a ski area in the 60s and 70s, and that very same lift stands here today. It's loud, slow, bumpy, and janky. At Highland, it's scarier going up the mountain than down. When you get off at the top, you need to sprint away from it because it doesn't slow down. Despite this, it's bike specific and you can sit down on it, in contrast to some other lifts. I personally love it and hope it doesn't change, but let's be honest, how much worse can a lift get before it's condemned? I'm left with no choice but to give the lift a 3. On to trail quality. This rating is mostly about drainage, the riding surface, and the transitions. To be fair, Highland is a serious park that hosts a lot of events. The trails get used hard, and it shows. In some spots, the braking bumps were every bit as bad as Whistler, but in others, they weren't bad at all. A lot of the lips were made of indestructible rock, and the wooden features were built very well. There are a few noticeable drainage problems around Highland, but nothing real bad. On the day I went, it had poured the night before. I'd need to give Highland a 5 on trail quality, since it's about what you would expect at a bike park. 
As for trail variety, this is where Highland shines. From flowy roller coasters, it's a proper double black tech. Oh, this stuff is bad. Ooh. Holy sh <laughs> The stuff that scares the living sh out of me. Highland truly has it all. You'll also find everything you'd expect to see at a bike park. From jump trails, to huge drops, to cool wooden features. On trails alone, Highland has impressive variety, but that's not even close to where it ends. At the base of the hill, there's a jump park that I didn't even have time to ride. I did make time to visit the Highland Training Center, which features a foam pit and resi box. The foam pit is for practicing big tricks. After you climb out of the foam pit with incredible difficulty, you can practice your trick on the resi box. It's smooth and padded from underneath, so crashing is usually okay. You! Once your trick is dialed, you can take it to the wooden box. All of this is housed in a 10,000 square foot building at the base of a downhill course. I gotta crank back a little harder. With a whole slew of things you won't find anywhere else, I'd have to give Highland an 8 on variety. Now for the food. At Highland, you won't find a ski village with steakhouses and fine dining, but you will find everything a grimy mountain biker could ask for. The menu had enough variety to suit even the pickiest eaters, but I chose an ordinary buffalo chicken wrap. It was good! As for the blueberry banana smoothie, it was amazing. Clearly, someone put a lot of thought into this place to make it geared towards people like us. Even the pricing was fair. Some places have the balls to charge $6 for a Powerade. I give Highland a 7 on food, because it has a sensible and affordable selection of satisfying eats, along with truly healthy options, like actual fruit. This is all safely above average. On to fun factor. This rating pertains to the feeling you get at the park. How much fun is it? Let me use Whistler as an example of an incredible facility with an average fun factor. People take themselves pretty seriously there, and the place is too big and spread out to feel intimate. It's magical and exhilarating, but there are places where you can have more fun. As for Highland, I think they have a winning formula. All their food and rental facilities are in one communal place, right by the lift. You can look out the window of the lodge and see riders screaming off the course. The summit is small and cramped, which forces riders to congregate near the trail signs and socialize with each other. The runs are short, but sweet, so you can go ham without conserving energy. Highland is aptly named, because you'll be high as balls after riding it. High on life and high on stoke. I give it an 8 on fun. Let's talk about scenery. Highland does have some natural beauty at the base of the hill, and plenty of wildflowers to go around. The view from the summit is pretty ordinary, and the trails themselves are marked up with tape and signs everywhere. This isn't a bad thing, and in fact, it's appropriate. Still, I don't think scenery is one of Highland's strong points. It's pleasant, but not extraordinary. So I give Highland a 5 for being exactly what you'd expect at a bike park. My final rating is perhaps the least objective of all. How likely am I to return to Highland? Barring the chance that I quit mountain biking to drift cars, I'd need to put that at a 9. I'm already planning my next visit to Highland this spring. There's so much stuff I need to ride, and so many people I want to see again. Since my family lives in the Northeast, it's also convenient, despite the fact that it's five hours from Long Island. When we add up all these scores, Highland gets a 64. That's the highest score so far, but it's only the second place I've rated. Although Highland has a janky lift and ordinary scenery, it's packed with stuff you won't find anywhere else. It's a one-of-a-kind, bikes-only facility that every rider in the Northeast should visit. I'm starting a playlist for these bike park ratings, so click the link below if you missed the last video. Until I make it back to Highland, thanks for riding with me today, and I'll see you next time.